Joshua is agreed with. And the real challenge is to agree to it. And the real challenge is it is so easy. And the real challenge is because it's easy, it's difficult to believe. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because all our life is let's storm heaven. <laughs> and God is saying, stop storming heaven and stop your own head, stupid head. <laughs> because your head is full of nonsense. Yes. What I did not tell you to do. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. yes. And that's why I look really like a joker, a clown. Because, because I am not in all other activities. I'm only looking at there and I'm saying, my document says this. So I will go and take my inheritance. When it is inheritance, do you sweat for it? No. no. Or did your mama and dada work for it? No. My mom and dad. Mom and dad worked for it. But it comes to the children free. So my big brother worked for it. His name is Jesus. And he said, son, my brother, little brother, this is for you, a gift from me. What will you say? Thank you. Hey, hey, do you all have something called as gift vouchers? Yes. yes. So somebody gave you two euros gift voucher. You went to the store, okay? did all the purchases and you kept kissing that gift voucher and then the time came for the payment you kept it inside and you gave your credit card <laughs> praise god and you passed through everything and the, and the gift voucher you kept it for two years then one day somebody said hey you should have used it and now you went and then they said expiry date is over <laughs> What is the expiry date over? The day you put, they put you in the coffin, the expiry date is over. And then, after putting you in the coffin, they lower you and they put a cross. And they write over there, R-I-P. Written, if possible, to use your voucher again. <laughs> because your time is out. Now, now, for the gift voucher which was given to you, did you work for it? No. no. But did somebody give it to you out of love? Yes. How would it feel for that person, after giving the voucher, two years later on, the person finds the voucher is still in your pocket? How would Jesus feel after 2,000 years, he finds his people in the church carrying the voucher in their pocket, never cashing it? And the one who is cashing it day and night, people get annoyed. How come it's happening only with him? Because he's using the voucher every day. <laughs> and, and the voucher that he gave me was not 200 euros. He said, unlimited. Use as much as you want for my kingdom. I think you did not like it. Um. Just put the amplifier, brother. I don't know why they are not even happy, brother. Oh, yes, they are. Yeah, I, I understand, I understand. I understand because you have not used vouchers for so many years. Yeah. Now you are irritated with me. But thank God, at least you know now. Yes. It's never too late. Thank Hallelujah. 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 Uh, now, that's why we come every time and give you gift vouchers. What is that gift voucher? That small book. It is not a play book. It is a gift voucher telling you what is covered under grace. When you agree to it, it becomes your faith. Yeah. Now, the manifestation begins. Now, for example, I shared with you about that lady who had 38 years of allergy, 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 for which she was all the time in the hospital with asthma. When we gave her the gift voucher, what did she do? She used it. And she said, I am not paying anymore with my credit card. I'm going to use the gift voucher. She destroyed asthma. And now when she destroyed asthma, she's so excited, she's saying, I'm turning the pages to get all my gift vouchers done. How does it look you got a gift voucher in your pocket and you're telling the preacher, can you lay your hands on me? 
hey, do you go to the cashier there and, and you got a gift voucher, you keep it in your pocket and then you say, uh, cashier, can you lay your hands on me? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, there is gift voucher. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. Really there? Yes. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Then why do you look at me as if I'm talking something nonsense? Oh, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and, and praise God, because people were not getting the gift voucher, he has started to give the gift voucher in an electronic way. Oh, Download God. the Bible on your mobile. Gift voucher is there. <laughs> okay, let's read it. Therefore, inheriting, say that again. Inheriting. Hey, hey. Inheriting. Inheriting. The promise depends entirely on faith. On faith. What about the mountain that you were talking about? I know. That too without shoes. That too without the, the overcoat. With only thin clothing. So that you freeze. And when you freeze, all your bones are rattling. <laughs> and then when you go there, and then you say, <laughs> Now, your focus is on Jesus or on your bones? On your bones. <laughs> Lord, I'm preaching good today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are, are, are the big fortresses falling apart? Come on! Yes. Yeah. Therefore, inheriting the promises depend, depends entirely on faith that is confident, trust in the 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 He said first faith. Therefore, inheriting the promises depends entirely on faith. And then he goes on to say, that is confidence, trust. trust. So what is faith and what is trust? So what's the difference between faith and trust? How many of you say divine mercy prayer? Okay, okay, how many of you say the divine mercy prayer? Back only. Hello, how many of you say the divine mercy prayer? No. Karma, you don't say divine mercy prayers? <laughs> she doesn't know divine mercy prayers? Okay. Yeah. Do you say the divine mercy prayer? Okay. Now, now do, it, is that picture saying, Jesus, I trust in you? Yes. 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 So what is trust? Believe. So what is faith? Believe. So why do you use uh, the two words faith and trust? Trust that he has the job done. And faith is he doesn't have the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Pat! Yes. Talk to me! I suppose faith yes. is believing, believing that he has the job done without any inner, inner doubt. Believing that he has done the job without? Doubt. Without any doubt. Which is what? That is what? Doubt is. No, no, without any doubt is faith or trust. What the definition that you're giving? It's faith. And trust is with doubt. Trust is faith. It's a combination. How much to say? Now I'm puzzled. Tell me again. It says there. It's like. It says it is trust. So much the same. Hmm? That two of the same. Never. It is not the same. Like taking a leap of faith up a cliff and trusting. Sorry. I don't know. I can't remember. You you go on the cliff and you jump and you're trusting God. Yes. Oh my God! <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> it's like that. It's like. You trust and God will hold you, huh? You'll die. Don't do that. Complete. Complete. <laughs> Surrender to God. Is what? Trust? Yes. And faith is what? No surrender? No, that's surrender too. Okay, let me explain to you 
the difference between faith and trust. Now we learned that grace is a promise of God. Yes. Agree? Yes. Everybody agree? Yes. When I <coughs> respond to that promise with my action, it became my faith. So my action is agreeing to God's promise. Now, when I'm responding to that promise of God, can I see those promises manifested or not yet manifested? Manifested. Okay. Let me explain. Godma is sitting here and there's a lady sitting next to you and there is a lady sitting next to you. Can you see them? Yes. Okay. Do you have faith that she's sitting next to you? I do. <clears throat> Listen to my question. Godma, do you have faith that she's sitting next to you. No, you know. No, you don't need faith. You can see with your eyes, and therefore you'll say, I don't need faith to believe that she's sitting next to me, because I can see her. I know she's sitting next to me. Are, are, are you following? Yes. Okay, now, now, next question, next question. Do you have faith that there is somebody sitting in between you two? In between? Yes. Do you believe, do you have faith that somebody is sitting in between you two? Could be. Could be? Like now, if you say could be, is it faith or doubt? Like, I believe there is, there are angels around me. Good. So, do you have faith that yes. there are angels sitting yes. next to you? Yes. Now, can you see it? No. But I believe it. Do you believe it? Why do you believe it? Because it's written in the Word. Yes. Right? In the same way, now you're looking for a job. Let's see. An example. Yeah, okay. You are saying, Lord, I thank you for giving me a job. Yes. Okay? But have you got a job till now? No. no. Now, how do you know you, you got a job? Because God, you said that you will supply all my needs. Yes. And job is my need. Yes. And that's why I thank you, Lord, that you have given me a job. Yes. According to your riches in glory to Christ Jesus. Yes. Right? Yes. So am I now operating on grace, the promise yes. of God, with yes. my faith, and I'm thanking God. Yes. Now, in reality, in physical, yes. that was in spiritual, in physical, do I have a job? Not yet. But am I believing I got a job? Yes. Yes. On what ground? Because he said. Yes. Correct? Yes. Six months went by, and you're thanking God, and the job did not come. Now what happens? Keep on thanking God, or now it starts wavering. Yeah, no, it depends on your faith, though. Trust. Come on. Trust. When when you are believing in faith for it to happen, and now your excitement is dying slowly, because on the other side, six months, no job, the pressure on other things have come. The money which was there is getting over. Now, do you have the same peace and the same confidence? No. Now, as days go by, your faith starts to wave. Because every time you're stretching your neck and say, when will it manifest? Yes. Is that right? Yes. yes. Now, a person of trust, watch this. A person of trust is saying, God, thank you for giving me the job according to your word. And let me tell you, God, whether I get a job manifested or not, my relationship with you is not based on the job. My relationship with you is based on that I love you. Yes. Even if I have to die, I'm willing to die. Even if I have to starve, I'm willing to starve. But I love you. Yes. Are you, are you following? Yes. yes. So that person's relationship <coughs> does not waver because he is not focused on what I can get from God. Let me give an example. There are three friends, Cedric, Meshach, and Abedia. These three friends are not obeying the king or bowing down to the idol. Because they said, we will die, but we will not bow down. So the king summons them and says, listen, I'm going to give you a chance. If you bow down, I will spare you. What do they say? No. Listen, no king, 
if our God saves us, okay, but even if our God doesn't save us, we will still not bow down to this idol. Yeah. So, is it their action based on God saving, the king changing his mind, or are they committed to God? Committed. So what is trust? Trust is, I'm committed to God, whether it rains, it is winter, it is summer, it is storm, it is flood, it is anything, I am committed to God. And I am not changing my commitment. Is trusting in God. Now, now, they did that commitment, okay? So the king says, okay, heat the furnace. And he says, because they said that, heat it seven times more. Now, as it is getting heated up, can they feel the heat? Yes. yes. Can they see the death coming? Yes. 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 Can that change their commitment? Yeah, it can yes. change. Come on. Yes. Can it yes. challenge them to change their yes. commitment? Yes. But yes. what are they saying? No. no. We are ready to die, but we are not ready to change. Yes. Now, so the king says, okay, throw them into the furnace. Now, the soldiers who are going to throw them, are they going to stand behind them or in front of them? Behind. Behind them. And the ones who threw them, they died with the fire. Yes. And these three are inside praising God. <laughs> and they are saying, hey, if we die, we will be with God. Hallelujah. Ding, ding, ding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what did the king see? These fellows should be fear of death. They have no fear of death. They are praising God. And he says, did we put three? How come the fourth one came? And he says, the fourth one looks like the son of God. When a person is trusting in God, the furnace is always heated up seven times against the person who is committed to God. Why? Because the devil hates commitment. <laughs> and when a person is committed to God and he's in the furnace seven times more heated and he's still committed to God, the Son of God always shows where there's commitment. Did the fire affect the boys? No. 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 Did they die? No. no. And when they were brought out, did the king get changed? Yes. yes. Did he change his Greek. faith from his God yes. to yes. Yahweh? Yes. yes. So when will people change looking at you? When you preach or when they see you committed? Are you following? Yes. When they see your trust, even in the day of battle, yes. that you are unshakable, yes. your foundation is the word, that's when you realize it is not my work, it is God's work, and I'm going to agree to my God. Yes. Whether I live or I die, I am committed to God. And that is called as confident trust. In the unseen God. Hallelujah. Now my question to you is the apostles when they started with Jesus, did they have trust? Did they have faith? Or they had fighting? Fighting. Fighting. When Jesus was on the cross, were they there or they ran away for their life? Right. Right. Now does isn't it looking that Jesus' is training of three and a half years went wasted? Yes. It looks like it. But did Jesus open his mouth and speak a single word against them? No. no. When he rose from the dead and he came and met them, did he say, peace be with you or I'll break you into pieces? <laughs> now when somebody ran away whom you trusted, and now when you meet them again, do you say, peace be with you or you break that person into pieces? <laughs> what did Jesus say? Peace be with you. Why do you think Jesus said peace be with you? Because he knows the potential in those people. Yes. Which they don't know. And that's why he says, listen, I understand you made the mistake. Your mistake does not mean your future and your destination is on that mistake. If you can just change your thinking now, what you are going to do henceforth is going to be a mind-blowing future which after your death 
even after 2000 years later on your work will still continue yes. hallelujah come on yes absolutely now when they started the day they got anointed with the holy ghost on the day of pentecost were they interested in their life no no they were they interested in their own life no, no. no. were they interested in their business no. no were they interested in euros no, no. Were they interested in catching fish? No. No. Were they, did they have to leave their family behind yes. and yes. go? Yes. yes. Now, did they do all that? Yes. Now, yes. did any of them die a natural death? No. no. Were they all killed? But did they enjoy even when death came? No. Oh. <laughs> even when death came, they were excited. And even Paul, who had never met Jesus, he said, Dad, where are you? Come, come and stink me. And if you stink me and I die, I'm excited. I'll meet my master. And then I have to tell you one more thing. If you don't kill me and I'm alive, I'm going to preach the word till my last breath. And every time I preach, ha ha, souls are being saved. Every breath that I take, souls are being saved somewhere. Hallelujah. And if I die, I'm so excited. You can have my dust which is called the body. But my spirit and soul is going to be with my master. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So was Paul operating in faith or trust? Faith. Trust, I suppose. Trust, trust. Yes. yes. What about the apostles? Faith or trust? Trust. trust? trust. And those who are trusting in God, they are unshakable. Psalms 112. I don't know the words, brother. Those whose hearts are fixed in the Lord. Just read that. Isn't that good? Yes. Yeah, good, good. Psalms 112. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Slowly, 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 slowly. Go, 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 go. Okay, let's start with six, I think. Six. Can you give me the other translation, please? A good man shows favor and lend it. A good man shows favor and borrows. Lend it. Lend it. So according to the word of God, are we supposed to borrow or lend? Lend it. But which one do we practice? Borrow. Okay. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be ever in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings and his heart and his heart Hello, his heart. Hello, his heart. Hello, his heart. He speaks what? Trusting. So is he committed? Yes. Even when the evil tidings are there. Yes. Even when everything opposition is there. Is he fixed to the word of God? Yes. Is he fixed to commit himself to do the word of God? Yes. Yes. Then his heart, his his heart is you know, you're established. What's the meaning of the word established? Stabilized. Firmly. Good. Say that again. The first word? Stabilized. Stabilize. Now, have you ever heard a word called stabilizer? Yes. yes. When do people use stabilizer? Huh? No, no. In your, in your country, the electric power might be constant. In, in, in Bombay, the current is stable. When you go to his place, suddenly the light will be flickering, like very bright, and suddenly it will become that is in his place, not my place. Is that right, brother? Yes, brother. Yeah, he cannot deny that. 
So there, when the power goes high, and if they don't have stabilizer, then that appliance can be burned. Yes. 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 So for all the equipment, they have stabilizer. So what happens when the current comes with force, the stabilizer stops the extra current. Yeah. When the current goes low, it helps the current to rise up. So the stabilizer maintains. So when your heart is fixed on God, on his word, the word of God is your stabilizer. Yes. <laughs> when the pressure comes, the word of God, it, it, you are about to open your mouth and speak, the word of God is your stabilizer. It says, shh, 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 be quiet, be quiet. Hold your peace. Has anybody ever heard the Lord say, hold your peace, and you overruled that, that what God was whispering into your ears, and he said, no, I will teach you a good lesson. Let me open my mouth. And you open your mouth, and what happened? Was there peace? No, no. Or were you in pieces? Pieces. <laughs> pieces. So which one is good? To have the word of God as your stabilizer? Yes, the word of God as your stabilizer. Pat, have you ever lost your cool? Yes. So, did you have the stabilizer at that time? No. So after losing the cool, did it profit you? No. <laughs> so, which one is good? To get your heart fixed on the world? Yes. Trust in the Lord? Yes. yes. Or go with your own understanding? No, no, no. That's why he says, his heart is fixed, and because his heart is fixed, he shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Enemies are not human beings. Enemies are all the works of the devil. Yes. <sighs> so, my question is, are you operating in faith or trust? Trust. Can a person get into trust without his heart being fixed? No. No, no. the heart and his heart is fixed on what? On the Lord? Word. On his word. The because the word and the Lord are the same. Yes. Is it making sense now? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put that 16th verse again, Amplified Brother. No, no, the Amplified Brother. Okay. Are, you, are you ready? Yes. Let's start again. Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. Faith. Faith is what? Your works or believing? Believing. Believing, believing evidence seen or evidence not seen? Unseen. 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 Good. That is being confident, committed, trusting in the seen God or unseen God? Unseen. 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 Which one do we believe more, the seen or the unseen? The unseen. Seen or unseen? When it was what we see, brother. Okay, okay, let me give you an example. Don't feel bad, okay? Have you ever seen your face till today with your natural eyes? Yes. Uh, listen to my question. Have you ever seen your face with your natural eyes? Not a reflection directly. None of us have seen. No. no. Do you see your face in the mirror? Yes. Yes. Do you believe the mirror? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kay, can you explain to me what do you mean by sometime? <laughs> you said that sometime and everybody laughed. I'm confused. Well, sometimes you. Depends on the makeup. Good, you so sometimes you go into places and the, and the mirrors are distorted. They're they're different. And what what do you, what, do you, what does she mean? I mean they you know some mirrors in hotels and different places that you go into. Convex mirror. Like okay, that. okay, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm taking the normal mirror. No, no, the normal mirror is okay. Okay, now let's say. Three of us wanted to play prank on you. And he said, Sister, there's something black, black on your nose. Can you feel it? No. Oh. Will you believe us? 
don't know. Now you have a mirror, yeah. and you looked into the mirror, it shows nothing is there. And I came and said, there's something black on your nose. Will you believe my words? No. no. My brother Pat comes after two minutes and says, Kay, what's that black on your nose? Again, you look into the mirror, it shows nothing is there. Will you believe Pat's word? No. No. Then comes Abel Francis. <laughs> and he says, Sister, there's something on your nose and something on your cheek, which is black. Now, will you look into the mirror? Yeah. Will you believe his word? No. No. Even if 50 people come, will you believe their words? No. Why not? Because I see. Because you know, the mirror can never tell a lie when it comes to natural things. Yes. Things which are seen, it will show exactly what it is. Is that right? Yes. In the same way the Bible says, the Bible is a spiritual mirror that will show you exactly the things that are in the spirit, the unseen world. Now the question is, are you willing to look into the mirror called the Bible, which says, in my name you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Two, you will see your hand and say, I don't feel any power. Which mirror are you going to believe? The natural eyes, senses, or the spiritual mirror? Spiritual. And that becomes my biggest pattern. Because in the spiritual mirror, he says, you can receive everything as your inheritance. And in the natural mirror, the sense is saying, how can I receive? Spiritual mirror is saying, hey listen, when Jesus hung on the cross by his wounds, you were already healed. The natural mirror says, I still have pain. I still can't move my legs. And the doctor's report says, there's cancer, there's tumor. Now which mirror can I believe? The one which I can feel or the mirror of the unseen God speaking to you, promising you in his word, unseen things. And that's why he says, God's promises are not things which you can sense. They are things that are from the spiritual mirror. And just as Cain said, I cannot see my nose, but yet I believe the natural mirror. I don't believe their words, because the natural mirror says there is absolutely no dark black mark on my nose. Praise God. In the same way, the spiritual mirror says, by his stripes, by his wounds, you have been healed. Now, your natural mirror, that is your eyes are saying, not yet, I can see the wounds. Your feelings are saying, there's a pain. The doctor's report is screaming and saying, but the doctor's word said, I'm going to die with that sickness. Which mirror are you going to believe? A person who is trusting in God is saying, yes, I can feel it. Yes, I can see it. Yes, I can hear it. But I overrule it. Because God said, my creator said, I believe. And I have decided to be committed to this world. That's when your heart is fixed. That's when you are established, your foundation on this world. Therefore, inheriting the promises depends on the unseen God in order that it might be given as an act of grace. It is never given as an act of your works. It is given as an act of grace. Grace is what Jesus has done for you. His unmerited favor. I don't deserve it. But God has given it to me. And he has given me his mercy. So that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham not only to those Jewish believers who keep the law, but also to the Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham. Now, did God give Abraham a promise? 
Now was it because of Abraham's good works? No. Or was it out of God's love? God's out love. of love. Now when God gave him a promise saying, you are a father of many nations, did Abraham have children? No. no. So if he could not have children when he was young, and now he's 99, and his wife is 89, can he believe in that promise? He did. He did. He did. But in the natural, physical no. senses, is it no. possible? No. no. Now, isn't that called as trusting? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. So, is the promise of God available to everybody? Yes. yes. Can it be received by trusting? Yes. Or by works? Trust. Trusting. Is it guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham? Yes. yes. Are you a descendant of Abraham? Yes. yes. So you mean to say, you mean to say, Abraham came to Ireland. That's he why he, he didn't have to. <laughs> I never knew Abraham came to Ireland. <laughs> because they are descendants of Abraham. <laughs> Is it recorded in your history? Abraham came to Ireland? No. no. They forgot it. So how can you say you are a descendant of Abraham? That was the promise of God to us. Which promise are you talking about? God, ma, which promise are you talking about? Now my question to you is, have you ever been to Medjugorje? I have. So when you go to Medjugorje, do you carry your documents with you? Passport. Yes, passport. Yes, I do. Why don't? Why do you carry it? <laughs> you can tell them I'm Irish. Yes. <laughs> I don't need a document. I'm Irish. Can you see my eyes? It's an Irish eye. Yes. Can you see my hair? Yes. <laughs> it's an Irish hair. No, no. <laughs> okay. Now. Will they allow you to pass through without a document? No. So how can you tell me that you are a descendant of Abraham? Do you have a passport? I have. Which says that you are a descendant of Abraham? This is how the devil talks to everybody. Listen, whether you like it or not, the devil talks to everybody. What makes you think you, 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 are a descendant of Abraham. I know. I just know. He no, talks to you Lord, and he screams in your ears it's, and he says, It's in the Bible. And it's I in the Bible. So, so you can go and tell the, the passport office when you stand at immigration, it's in your computer, I believe. <laughs> can you say all those things or do you have to show the document? Mama, you have to carry your document as a proof. Yes, you do. So when you said you are a descendant of Abraham, because these promises are guaranteed to descendants of Abraham, and if you don't have a document to prove your case, no entry. Well, uh, let's see, let's start this. Uh, you just got disqualified. <laughs> I'm sorry to say we can't pa let you pass through. Please go back to Ireland. <laughs> and don't ever come back and say that you are a descendant of Abraham. Have you got any document to prove? No. Now let me show you the document. Let me show you your document. I have any. What is this? It's written in my heart. <laughs> Sorry? Hold on, hold on, don't show it, don't show it. She said something. It's written in my heart. So you go and stand in front of the immigration and say, you want the passport? It's written in my heart. You talk about it. You have to x-ray it. What did she say? X-ray. X-ray. You are getting x-ray. X-ray will not show heart, it will show only bones. X-ray shows heart? No. The image. Just the image. But bones, yes, if it was written in your bones, we could have seen. So is your passport written in the bones or heart? It's in the bones. 
I hope you'll get good sleep tonight. I, was, I think I will. <laughs> Others will say, this man came from India and tortured me and tortured me and tortured me. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Galatians 3.9. 3.29. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, 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 listen. listen, listen. Galatians 3.29. Let's read it. 29? 29. Look at your passport. Read it, please. <coughs> Read it loudly, God, ma. Yes. And born in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heir according to the promise. Now, have you got your passport? <laughs> yes, I have. But so yes. now, Jesus says, yes. because you are grafted and baptized in Jesus, yes. you are now... So Yes. Abraham's seed. So now, is the grace guaranteed to you? Yes. Good. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Now, 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 just switch it off. Are you <coughs> an Abraham's seed, uh, Abraham's descendant? Um, yes, I am. What, what's the passport? Christ. What Christ? The, what? As Jesus. What Christ Jesus? The Son of God. So what? The promise that was given to Abraham and everybody else and, and to me. What was the promise? That he would be there um, and save us. If you prompt the answer, I'll make you stand on the chair. <laughs> now that's what happened. You read it, did not understand it, you don't have the passport because you did not understand it. You can't, you don't know what to say now. No, I don't. Now, remember. Else know? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, let me, she say, ask everybody else, why are you asking me? Okay, are you the descendant of Abraham? Yes. Yes. What makes you think so? Me. Hmm. I just showed you the document. Okay. Are you a descendant of Abraham? Don't look into your Bible. Because we're baptized in Christ. Tell me more. Good, good. Because you're baptized in Christ. Yes, good, good, good. So, 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 yes. Because you are baptized in Christ, and Christ came from Abraham's lineage, now you became. That adopted yes. member yes. in the family yes. of Abraham. Hallelujah. 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 So now, are you supposed to inherit the promises? Yes. 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 Because the devil will beat you up and say, you're not qualified. And when you know the word of God, you'll say, devil, back off. I got a document. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, go go to the next next slide. Are you enjoying or are you fed up with me? No, no, no. I, I, are you are you understanding where we are going wrong? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Now, yes. just just put the just put the slide, the teaching. After this, okay. Now, did you understand this? Yeah. Everything in God begins with faith and it's a guarantee to everybody yes. but it should be backed up with grace. grace. So when you have got access to grace through faith. 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 Okay. And then, in God. Yes. then when faith is in operation grace is being accessed. 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 And all that grace has Salvation, healings, miracles, love, peace, joy, and more is working. Now, now, we learn that grace is the promise of God. Now, does the promise of God cover up every area of our life? 
does the promise of God cover up every area of our life? Yes. 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 So is grace covering up everything? Yes. yes. So when you, whenever you respond in your faith, are you supposed to respond in your faith with your own understanding or the document? The document. Yes. So when you are responding to the document, will that document now start taking your faith and act like God? Yes. Are uh, you understanding? Yes. Again, 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 again. We learned that grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God. So now when you're studying the Bible and there you read, because you are in Christ, you are descendant of Abraham. Yes. And because you are descendant of Abraham, and God blessed Abraham with all blessings, now according to the word of God, you are supposed to receive Abraham's blessings. Yes. So grace says, I blessed you with Abraham's blessing. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Now what will you say? God, I got a document from you which says, I am blessed with Abraham's blessing. So now, will you operate based on what receipt you have, or will you be operating on your sense knowledge? Receipt. 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 Now, now, listen. I, I did not know, I did not know this receipt, Mark 16, where the Lord says, all those who believe in me, they shall cast out demons, they lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I did not know that. But when I read it, it was 5.30 in the evening. And I first read, in my name they shall cast out demons. When I read that, I began to cry. And I cried and cried, and at the same time, I was jumping on the bed, not on the floor. Because I said, God, I choose to believe what you say, and I'm so very glad that you did not say, those who believe in me after 10 years. You did not say those who believe in me after 15 years. You never said those who believe in me should be priests and nuns or preachers. You said whosoever believes. So if I believe, that means I can cast out demons. So I began to scream and say, thank you, Lord, that from now on I shall cast out demons. Hmm? That evening was a service at 7 o'clock. So I went to the prayer group leader and I said, do you know what? God is going to help us to cast out demons. He said, from when did you get that message? I said, from the written word of God. I said, come on, let's go and cast out demons. He said, hold on, you can't cast out demons just like that. I said, no, the Bible says that. And as we were talking, one lady came, <coughs> elderly lady, and said, my daughter has got bondages and she got demonic problems. When she said that, I said, see, see, we already got now one. Come on, let's go. He said, no, you just can't go like this. I said, no, we'll go. So he said, okay, we'll go tomorrow. Because I used to call him uncle. I was 7, 33. He must be at that time about 50. Okay. So I was calling him uncle. <coughs> I said, uncle, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> then the next day, we went. Then he asked me, do you know how to cast out? I said, no, I don't know. But he said, I will cast out. But how? I said, I don't know. I said, you are the leader. You must be knowing. He said, I also don't know. So I said, Sangi. Camera Sangi. Hmm? Camera Sangi. Yeah, all this time the camera has to hand. 